Tonight, we have one of ours. The first time I listened to him, I knew that this man has met Christ. Fire begats fire. When you walk in the spirit, you know men that are born of the spirit. God has birth on earth several movements. And every movement born by God, God has had his vessel that will champion such movements. And every movement that came upon the earth was fought against, resisted by men, but prevailed by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We have had several movements. Some of us have walked in several of the movements. When I heard about holiness, revival movement, I knew this could be the last move of God upon the earth. You know why? The bride must be washed. She must be dressed before the bridegroom will take her. We have had the reformation movement. We've had the Holy Ghost movement. Apostolic prophetic we've had the missions movement some of us have been in it and we are still in it all of this is to preach the gospel but the holiness movement is to wash to cleanse to prepare tonight we have Pastor Paul Rica here Hallelujah. I didn't know we were going to have him. It was a week ago he came to this town, then came to the house and said, Look, we have this program. Can you give us some time? And then we phoned later. He said he will come today. So we'll have him tonight. We'll have him tomorrow night. And he will go back to Abuja. Hallelujah. Pastor Paul Rika, you're welcome, sir. We can have you off the stage now. You're welcome. We are glad to have you around. We are so happy. Amen. Uh, I am not a new person here. By the grace of God, uh, I would have said maybe I have been here five times. So I'm not new. I'm motivated by the love of the pastor to answer this call to be here. He has been so loving. We are, I can, I can say, children to him. We respect him. We honor him. We are glad that he has recognized the hand of God upon us. And we felt that we also, being young, should encourage him in our young blood in the work he is doing. That's why 
we answer this invitation. And if there's anything the Lord would use in me to bless you, let him do so. That's why I have come. Let's rise up upon our feet as we worship the Lord. He has the whole world. He has the whole wide world. I say he has the whole world. Amen. He has the whole world. He has the whole wide world. I say he has the whole world. Heavenly Father, you are one. You are excellent, you are marvelous. I worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You got the whole world in your heavenly Father. You are wonderful. Heavenly Father, you are wonderful, for you are marvelous. Heavenly Father, you are wonderful, excellent, you are marvelous. I say I worship you, Lord, for you are mighty, you've got the hope. You've, you've got the whole world. You've got the whole wide world. You've got the whole world. Amen. You've got the whole world. You've got the whole wide world. I say you've got the whole world. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we love you. The creator of our souls. There's none like you. Divine, we are here to encourage one another about you. We are here to receive some insight from you. Father, you want us to have the best. And so you are teaching us to know the truth. You're inspiring us to have the best. 
I'm praying my brethren will be inspired today. Amen. They will want to have the best from you. Thank you, Father. Give us the best indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How God rewards the Christian life and service. How God rewards the Christian life and service. One thing we have to know about God is he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. Of course we know that he rewards the good man with good, the evil man with evil. We know him to be the judge, but there is something I want you to know about God. He is a God of justice. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, I read from verse 1. Deuteronomy 32 from verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the weights of my mouth, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender heart, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is He. My emphasis is on just and right is He. He does well, His ways are equal. He manifests in truth to people. He is sincere. He is dependable. He rewards. That is what the scripture describes him. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. God is a rewarder. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm picking the word, he is a rewarder. Here, it shows he rewards us in good ways. He rewards them that come to him. He rewards them that serve him. Remember I say, how God rewards the Christian life and service. He rewards them that serve him. He told Abraham when he called him, Abraham, look to me, I am a rewarder. In Genesis 15, Abraham, Look to my life. See me, Abraham, as a rewarder. Genesis 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, 
Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine here. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine here, but he that shall come forth out of thine own boils shall be done here. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And Abraham believed in the Lord. And he counted to him for righteousness. So you can see here that God rewarded Abraham because Abraham was serving him. He rewarded him by giving him a child. He's a rewarder. As you are serving the Lord, the Lord will reward you. He knows what you are suffering for him. He knows the disaster that you're facing. He knows that you have forsaken all to follow him. Peter said it, Lord, we have forsaken all and we are following you. What shall we have? He assured Peter, you will be rewarded. All of you that have forsaken Wife, children, houses, lands, whatever, you shall have it a hundredfold. So the Lord will reward you. This suffering, he knows how you have been abused. In fact, you suffer want. You suffer persecution. You have abandoned the world for the cause of Christ. See your qualification. You could have been in any position anyone is now. You would have been there too. But you ignored it for kingdom service. For kingdom war. The Lord is happy. And will reward you. And I pray he will remember you. In the book of Psalm 20. Psalm 20, I read from verse 1. The Bible tells us, saying, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. The Lord remember all your offerings and accept your bond sacrifice. The Lord grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsels. Amen. Can you see the Lord remember your offering and your bond sacrifice? What you have given out totally for him. How you burnt up yourself for him. For his service. May the Lord remember it over your life. Amen. That is the God that we are serving. As for women, your husband has been busy for the Lord. And uh, you're not enjoying what the other women in the world are enjoying. Because your husband is over there. It's not bringing in much money. It's not. So you're not having it plenty. Children suffer. Because, oh, yeah, what is daddy doing? He's a pastor. Where is he pastoring? He's pastoring in Koma Hill. He's pastoring in this place. He's pastoring in that place. They scarcely even see him. The contribution to the house is small. The Lord remember you in Jesus' name. So, now, having told you our God is a rewarder, I want to tell you 
the three kinds of reward. I say how God rewards the Christian life and service. I will tell you about the three kinds of rewards. Christians enjoy, receive from God. The three kinds of rewards. I stressed the Christian life and then the Christian service. Can you repeat that? The Christian life and the Christian service. Say it again. Thank you. I will open your eyes today to how God rewards this. Amen. It's okay. He can reward them together. He can reward them separately. He can reward these two on your life together. He can reward you only on one. And you may not have the other. That's it. Which means God can give you reward for the Christian life. God can also give you reward for the Christian service but may not give you reward for the Christian life. You may enjoy reward for the Christian service which you are serving but may not receive reward for the Christian life. Because the two are different. The Christian life, the Christian service. The two are different. The Christian life, the main reward of the Christian life is heaven. The main reward of the Christian life is heaven. The rewards of the Christian service now are both earthly and heavenly. The reward of the Christian service rewards are both earthly and heavenly. The Christian life, you are rewarded on it on the basis of holiness. But the Christian service, you are rewarded on it on the basis of faithfulness. Amen? You are rewarded on the Christian life on the basis of holiness. And that reward of the Christian life is heaven. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Heaven, the Christian life is pure. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord in heaven. The Christian life. Holiness is for the Christian life. But the Christian service, I say, is faithfulness. You did it well. Then it means you can do the Christian service well. I may not be living the Christian life well. You can do all that God wants you to do and carry it out well, but you are not living the Christian life. So God will meet you at the point of the Christian service and give you reward. But you are not going to heaven. That reward is earthly. God is a rewarder. He gave you an assignment, at least you did it well. He gave you an assignment. You did it well. So you should be rewarded. You are faithful. But since you did not live the Christian life well, he will give you mark where you scored. He will pass it. You are rewarded there. But come to heaven. Our, our only holiness takes to heaven. So we're going to spend our time to look into this in scripture. In the book of um, 
Second Kings chapter 9. I read from verse 1. Here we are going to see reward on the Christian service. Reward on faithful service, but no heaven because there was no holiness. Second Kings chapter 9, from verse 1. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Guide up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine heart. And go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshah, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord. I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramon Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house and he poured the oil on his head and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the land, even over Israel, and thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel for the whole house of Ahab shall perish and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebah and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahijah and the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye knew the man and his communication. And they said, it is false, tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed the king over Israel. Then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew with trumpet, saying, Jehu is king. So here, you see divine call was Jehu called by God yes God called him God called Jehu here you see divine anointing was Jehu anointed yes he was anointed the Spirit of God used him. Here you see divine commission. What was Jehu called to do? Clear. Destroy all the house of Ahab. Clear out Jezebel and her children. All things that pertain to Ahab clear it away I'm saying this because you could have received this commission divine call your vision was clear 
God sent an angel and gave you this commission. God called you through several dreams, several proofs, and we can see it in you by the anointing, by your service, ability to sing, ability to pray, ability to preach, ability to teach, administrative wisdom, signs and wonders, the power to cast out devils. We're seeing it actually. And it's original. It's not faint. It's original. Mm. Brother, divine call is different from holiness. Divine call on you is different from holiness. Holiness is mandated on every person that wants to go to heaven but are all called the calling is not for everybody the calling is specific the commission the commission you have received others have not received it others have not received it but for heaven the instruction is that be ye holy for I am holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Know this, so that when you are succeeding in ministry, you should know that that does not mean you're going to heaven. Know it. That when people are praising you, yeah, you're doing it. You are gifted. Your ministry is growing. The church is making progress in your hand. Don't be deceived. To think that you are going to heaven automatically. No. Going to heaven is not on ministry. It's on life. It's on life. Now, when Jeho received this commission, <laughs> if you see the things that Jeho did, I think read chapter 9 and 10 to see the works of Jehu. How Jehu immediately went forth and killed the king Jehoram, one of the sons of Jezebel that was ruling at that time. Jehu killed him. Look at it, verse 22. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the wardoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. And Joram turned his hands and fled and said to Ahaziah, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Jehoram between his arms. And the arrow went out at his heart and he sunk down. In his chariot. And Jehu said unto Bitka, his captain, Take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth, the Jezreelite. For remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, the Lord laid this burden on him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, said the Lord. And I will require thee in this plot, saith the Lord. Now therefore, take and cast him into the plot of ground according to the word of the Lord. Can you see? Jehu had started the judgment, the commission given to him. Kill all the children of Ahab. Clear away all the, the, the descendants of Ahab, the children of Jezebel. Clear Jezebel away herself. Immediately he went after the king. He was captain to the king, but commission had come. Wipe the west, wipe out evil from the land, wipe out witchcrafts from the land. He went after this man, cleared him out, killed the king, and now was hastening to look for Jezebel. The Lord, 
the Lord commissioned me. The Lord has given me this power. I will do it. So, the man continued. Yes, look at it in verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. And she painted her face and tied her head and looked out at a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace? Who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he, he trod her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, Go see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, and they found no more of her than the school and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore, they came again and told him, and he said, this is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field. In the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Hey, Jehu himself was hearing the prophecies that the Lord was given. The Lord gave the prophecy against Ahab. You have killed Naboth. Oh, because of this land? Okay. This land too. Dog shall drink your blood. This land. It was to be done in Ahab's day. But as he humbled, he said, it shall be done in your son's day. Now the son of Ahab was. This thing happened in that field. He said, throw him to that field. I was there. He was telling the, the man that he commanded to throw him, throw Joram, the king, to the field of Naboth. He said, do you remember? I was going with you, with Ahab, because they were serving under Ahab as military officers. When Elijah was prophesying to Ahab, Oh, you have killed and taken possession? So shall dogs lick up your blood in this land. See it now, it has come to pass. Oh, throw him there. Now, let's go ahead to Jezebel. As he went into the city, Jezebel looked up downstairs from, from where she was. And they said, huh, You killed your master? Will you have peace? When Zimri killed his master, did he have peace? Immediately he looked and said, Who would Jezebel there is on my side? Who? When they heard the voice of that anointed man, everybody was trembling there. The eunuchs that were there looked out of the window and said, Okay, throw her down from there. Yes. They threw Jezebel down. He threw the Jezebel on the food. But while she was coming, as she was beating here, beating here, her blood sprinkled on the wall. He now went to sit down somewhere and be eating. Later he said, well, let's go and bury her. Because he didn't remember the prophecy on Jezebel. Go and bury her, she's a king's daughter. They came and said, we didn't see her. Dogs have finished everything. The thing that dogs could not handle was the school and the, the bones of the palm and feet. Yes, do you remember the Lord had said in the portion of Jezreel, Dog shall eat up Jezebel, so that we shall not say this is her grave. And the word of the Lord has come to pass. Can you see a man like this walking on the word of God, fulfilling the mind of God? He missed it somewhere, there was no holiness. There was no hole in it. I want to tell you to be very careful with these arguments. They tell you about holiness. You're playing with it. I'm succeeding. I'm making it. You're making it. You don't know God. He will allow you to make it. 
because you are fulfilling something for him will God be so foolish to kill you no it's your choice whatever a man sows that shall he also reap I said before you heaven and the earth blessing and cursing life and death good and evil choose the choices yours to serve this God without holiness or to serve him with holiness the choice is yours you are disdaining the message of holiness the, well that's how they're doing it in the world they don't bother and they're prospering they don't know how wise God is how loving God is so Jehu did a lot. He did a lot. Yes, in chapter 10, verse 1. And Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, Now, as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and they are with you, chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor. Look even out the best and meetest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Behold, two kings stood not before him, how then shall we start? Get the story. I mean, this man was anointed. Holy God's power. He was acting under commission. So God backed him up. God gave him authority. The voice of Jehu was a terrorizing voice. The letters of Jehu, anointed letter. Who could stand them? Ahab had 70 sons and they were all in a particular city under some great men to train them. And Jehu wrote the elders of those cities, your master's children are with you, 70 of them. Now, Jehu has come. God has commissioned Jehu and Jehu is doing what the Lord has told him. I'm coming to that city. But since you love your master, choose one of them, one of those 70 that is good looking, strong, and make him king. Then fight for him against me, for I am coming. Then the people say, eh, Two kings, because the king of Judah visited the king. Israel in Samaria. Two kings could not stand this man. Can we stand him? No. They replied, Jeho. We can't stand. Verse 5. Let's read from verse 4. But they were exceeding afraid and said, Behold, two kings could, could two kings stood not before him. How then shall we stand? And he that was over the house. And he that was over the city, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children, sent to Jehu, saying, We are thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt beat us. We will not make any king. Do thou that which is good in thine eyes. Then he wrote a letter, the second time, to them, saying, If ye be mine, and if ye will hearken unto my voice take ye the heads of the men your master's sons and come to me to Jezreel by tomorrow this time now the king's sons being 70 persons were with the great men of the city they brought them up and it came to pass when the letter came to them that they took the king's sons and slew 70 persons and put their heads in baskets 
and send him them to Jerusalem. Who could stand Jehu? Not even witches and wizards. I'm telling you, that the power that was working on that man, who could stand? If he said, huh, everybody will bow because he was backed up by the power of him that commissioned him. Power. He could do anything. He could do anything. Nobody would plan against the Jehu and succeed. God was with him for service. For service. He prospered with us ever he turned for service because he was faithful in the commission. You are faithful. God is with you. They have tried every way they cannot make it with you for service. They have done all. And if you come to stand, everybody is afraid. God is with you because you are faithful in the commission. I'm telling you. What about killing the prophets of Baal? Verse 21 of chapter 10. And Jehu sent throughout all Israel and all the worshippers of Baal so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him that was over the, the vestry, bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went and Jonadab, the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, Search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord but the worshippers of Baal only and when they went in to offer sacrifices and bond offerings Jehu appointed four score men without and said if any of these men whom I have brought into the lands escape he that let him go his life shall be for the life of him and it came to pass as soon as he had made an end of offering the bond offering that Jehu said to the guard and to the captain, Go in and slay them. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword. And the guard and the captain cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images of the house of Baal and buried them. And they break down the images of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it a drought house unto this day. Verse 28. Let's read it. One, two, go. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. <laughs> Commission accomplished. And God was with him. But do you know how Jehu did some of this thing? He employed lies as the work, part of the work. But it, it worked for him. He employed lies also as part of the work. Yes, look at it. Verse 18 of chapter 10. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little. But what will Jehu do? Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore, call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtlety to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. Is that what a righteous man should do? Who's lived through? The wisdom that is from above is first pure. 
and undefiled. But this man that didn't bother about holiness in his life can employ any method as long as he achieves what he wants to achieve. I'm talking about your life. Holiness is not part of it. You can tell lies in ministry. You can employ anything you want to employ. You can play politics. Real, real politics. The type of politics that the house someone is doing. You can employ it in the church and achieve your aim. Commissioned. And you're achieving your aim. You're going. Yes. And nobody has discovered it. Or nobody is even talking about it. You're achieving. You're achieving. Now, commission accomplished. But look at it in chapter 10, verse 29. How be it from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them, to wit the golden calves that were in Bethel, and that were in Dan. And the Lord said unto Jehu. That's another thing about God. He will reward Jehu because a faithful service has been done. And the Lord said unto Jehu. Because that thou hast done well. In executing that which is right in mine eyes. And has done unto the house of Ahab. According to all that was in mine heart thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Verse 31. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam which made Israel to sin. That man died a sinner and went to hell. Commission fulfilled. The reward on earth for such faithful service is Jehu. You have carried out my commission. I will reward you on earth. Your children to the fourth generation shall rule over Israel. Your son shall take over from you. And your son's son shall take over from his father. Your son, son, son shall take to four generations because I want to appreciate for your being faithful. Now the question comes Will you just want God to appreciate you on earth and nothing in heaven? Will you want to eat what you are doing now just in this world? Nothing in heaven? The choice is here. If you want to go beyond the earth as a minister to receive crowns in heaven, ha, then bring holiness into your ministry. If you want the church, you are pastoring to enter heaven and not just to be blessed on earth, but to enter heaven, bring holiness into the church. Otherwise, all the blessing you are seeing now are enough. God cannot contradict himself. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. In case we say, ah, but where do you find that again? That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, such should be accomplished, established. Then let's go to uh, the book of Judges chapter 15. Judges, this is talking about another greatly anointed man of God. His name is Samson. As for his story, you know very well. The Holy Spirit was upon Samson. Power and anointing was upon Samson. But Samson was an immoral man. A fornicator, a troublemaker, 
there was no justice in his life but there was anointing nothing withstood him do you remember that time that Samson went into a particular city and slept with a harlot in that city the people saw that Samson was here so they waited for him at the gate because they wanted to kill him the Philistines wanted to kill Samson they closed the gate because there was no way Samson could, could open the gate and leave that city. Now, Samson knew what was the plan of the people. But anointing was there from the hollow. Anointing was still there. Solomon said, my wisdom was still with me. Please don't be confused of gifts. Don't be confused about anointing. Don't be confused of what you can do in service. The Lord wants me to open your eyes in this area. That he, you only see him by holiness. But you can see his shadow because of commission. Because of ministry. You will see his shadow. But for his real person, only holiness can see him. So, when Samson left the place, he did die. He came to the gate. And he just went to the, 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 the strength of the gate and moved it he moved the other one and removed them from their, from their ground, from the ground, from the pillar, wherever they, they buried them. Removed them, plus the stones that were on top, and put them on his shoulder and was going his own way. Anointing. He was not descending to show that the power was walking so much. He was climbing a mountain. <laughs> he was climbing a mountain with heavy load. You know when a trailer is climbing hill, some trailers don't make it. They start coming down. Samson was climbing a mountain as if he was descending a valley. Pa! From the harlot's house. God was quiet because he had promised to deliver Israel from the Philistines. And this man that he commissioned him to do it, he's doing the work. But he's not holy. He will not see the Lord. But the Lord will back him up if there's any trouble. The Lord will answer his prayer for the commission. Because whatever he required to do it well, the Lord will give him. Judges chapter 15 from verse 14. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mighty upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire. And his hands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jaw born of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with a jaw born of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with a jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass when he had made the end of speaking that, he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramadlehi. And he was so attest and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for test and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God cleft and hollow, and hollow place, 
that was in the jaw and there came water there out and when he had drunk his spirit came again and he revived wherefore he called the name thereof in Hako, which is in Lehi unto this day can you see miracle was done for Samson water came out of the jawbone of an ass he drank of it and revived that was a miracle why wouldn't God do miracle for somebody that is taking care of his people for somebody that is carrying out the commission he gave him God will do that miracle but if Samson did not repent he will not go to heaven because you go to heaven not on the basis of successful ministry but on the basis of holiness you go to heaven maybe let me give you an open eye on that in the book of second timothy chapter 4 second timothy chapter 4 i read verse 6 to verse 8 second timothy chapter 4 verse 6 to verse 8 it was of paul he said for i am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. He presented three things. Number one, I have fought a good fight. Number two, I have finished my course. Hmm. It's only the third thing that qualified him for heaven. Only the third thing he is saying now that qualified Paul for heaven. What was it? Let's read it together. I have kept the faith. That was the only one thing. Otherwise, all that Paul did, the reward would have been on earth only. And he said, if it were for this world, we suffer what we have suffered fought with beasts contended with false brethren we would have been of all men most miserable but since he kept faith keeping the faith is holiness keeping the heart pure no grudges there keeping the heart pure no lusting after women keeping the heart and life pure no embezzling the money of god keeping the faith no turning to demons for power keeping the faith no allowing pride into his life then he qualifies for verse 8 henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall, shall give me at that day and not to me only but to unto all them also that love is appearing this that is laid up for me in heaven is because I kept the faith not because I serve God in ministry in fact not because I succeeded in ministry is that I kept the faith I kept the faith because every man shall appear before God and our life shall be tested the works of our hands shall be tested they shall pass through fire it is only the righteous that shall not be burnt up otherwise your works may suffer loss you that is to say they cannot enter, qualify for you to enter heaven. Their works will not qualify. You didn't do them in holiness. Although the Lord gives you some portions. Eat, eat, take, 
take it do because you're doing something you're helping us in something you might be walking on the way in the night somebody is walking you don't know him but he's giving you help you're together the fear that you would have feared is gone because at least you're together moving somebody else is moving with you so you're doing something you're not offering your best but you're doing something your life is not righteous but you're doing something and so the Lord will reward you if it were not you who would have done it actually but you were a scaffold a scaffold used to build a house it's useful but does not remain with the house the people you served will go to heaven if they know holiness but not you you didn't do it with holiness Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 the Bible says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord can we repeat it one two go Say it a second time. For the last time. What is holiness? Second Corinthians chapter seven. Verse one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Holiness is cleaning yourself from deaths, spiritual deaths in your life. And this deeds could be in your heart spirit it could be in your flesh body holiness is cleansing of the heart and of the body in the fear of God the cleaning of the heart and of the body in the fear of God removing envy jealousy, pride, bitterness, and all this. Get them out of your life. Removing lust, greed, this, out, and have a pure heart. Come to your body on godly clothing, jewelry, palming, exposing dressing, all this. Get them out. They are filled in it in the sight of God if you say no I don't no 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 serve the Lord you will be rewarded but some people's reward are only on earth I'm telling you what, where, where will you be to argue where will you stand when we have left you in this earth would, which place are you going to stand to argue you will just argue with your foolishness you will hate yourself because Paul said, yes, I'm blessed on earth. But if it is only for this earth, all this service I am doing, just for the blessing of this earth, I'm a miserable person. And, but if it must be the other world, ah, then holiness. Carry it along. Then you are sure that. Now, there are people too that are blessed on earth and in heaven let it not only be said the righteous are blessed in heaven only no there are blessings also for the righteous on earth too Proverbs chapter 11 Proverbs chapter 11 verse 31 Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. 
also on this earth your righteous works shall be recompensed shall be blessed in this world but not only in this world but in heaven you shall have a double double in Mark chapter 10 Jesus showed that actually that's what the Lord desires of you the righteous God desires this that you receive reward in heaven also in verse 28 to verse 30 of chapter 10 Mark chapter 10 verse 28 to 30 then Peter began to say unto him Lord we have left all and have followed thee and Jesus answered and said verily I say unto you there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come what eternal life can you see the, I told you these blessings are separated into two earthly but earthly and heavenly God is saying have these two on yourself have these two as you are serving the Lord remember to serve with holiness so that you can have these two blessings in this earth and in the world to come in all your service some of you go to borrow money and never pay. Do you know that's wickedness? The wicked borrow it and pay it not again. You are young, unmarried, and you go about committing immorality in the village. Do you know what you're doing? You're suffering there actually. I'm going to Koma Hill. I'm going to this. We're in this jungle where people don't wear clothes. But you're committing immorality. See what great work you're doing. Rain is falling upon you. You're planting churches. You're doing this. You commit immorality. What is that for? Do this service and remember heaven. And if heaven is in your goal, holiness, do this service with holiness so that you too can go to heaven. See the promise of heaven here. The Lord will give you heaven. I said the Lord will give you heaven. He will still bless you upon the earth. He blesses men of God. Abraham was rich. So rich that when the king of Sodom wanted to add something, he said, no, I have enough. <laughs> Let it not be said that if the king of Sodom gave riches to Abraham. I have enough. I have enough. He was rich. Isaac sold and the Lord gave him a hundredfold. God blessed him upon the earth. But these people are in heaven. We have a place called Abraham's bosom. They were on the blessed, they were blessed on earth, and were blessed in heaven. They are now there. Abraham is in heaven. That's what God wants you. Serve God on earth. Be blessed on earth. Be blessed in heaven also. David was blessed, was rich. Do you know what he consecrated unto the Lord? He said, I have of my own proper good, good consecrated from my own world. Such number of gold, such number of silver, such number of precious stones, such for the house of the Lord. He had them. The righteous shall be blessed on earth shall be recompensed on earth but David is in heaven holiness took him there the bible says only the sin he sinned in Uriah's wife he didn't do anything like that again he didn't do it so don't give yourself to committing sin if you fail rise up don't want to fall again 
Don't want to fail again, to fall again. Stand firm to Jesus. Hold to this holiness so that you will also have heaven. Your testimony will be complete. Somebody told a story of the revelations of God. He said, a man, was it bad or woman? Was a man, I think it was a man, was persecuted. They gave him a blow of cutlass at his back. Cut deep. He died by that maybe. But in heaven, that place is diamond. Shining. Ah, you'll be looking at it, you want to go and see it. How? How did you develop this? The wound that you were given for Jesus on earth becomes the diamond in heaven. Amen? When Jesus resurrected, he shot us his wound. And that's what we shall ever remember. In heaven, he will make our wound diamonds everlasting. Your reward should be both earthly and heavenly. Go and hear something in heaven. Don't just do these things for the earth. Go to heaven. God wants to give you double reward. Earth and heaven. Earth and heaven. Earth and heaven. Earth and heaven. And to go to heaven, the ladder is holiness. Sinners don't go there. Don't be like Jehu, walking and lying. Don't do that. Take away lie out of your mouth. Be clean in Christian service. But then, the third group of people, heaven only. Lazarus is in this third group. Lazarus knew suffering. He knew suffering. He died in suffering. He got heaven. In the book of Luke, chapter 16. Luke, chapter 16. I read verse 19 there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of souls and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his souls. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Now he is comforted. The Lord must also talk to you who don't see anything to you can say, Oh, God has given me material blessing. You can be like this Lazarus. And for such one, the Lord is saying in John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Be comforted. You have not seen any material thing. You have not built a house of yourself. You have not bought a car. You don't have a motorcycle. You are living in a single room. Serve your God. Maintain holiness. The Lord says he has prepared a place for you. You will be rewarded. Lazarus. Lazarus died a beggar he is comforted in a place the richest on earth will wish to be but they have no life to be there they have not the holiness to be there you will be in such place God has made mansion for you in my father's house there are many mansions if it was not so, if there were no reward for you in your service, I would have told you, but there's reward for holiness, for the holy life, for this faithful Christian service. There's reward. Stand to eat, no material blessing. There is material, eternal blessing reserved in heaven for you. Jesus Christ was talking to some people who were passing through real suffering in the book of Revelation chapter 2. They were passing through real suffering and he promised them the reward of heaven. In verse, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 to 11. And unto the angel of the church is man arrived. This thing said the face and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. There's reward. Remain faithful. Don't share. Don't because of satanic trial and temptation. Go into sin. Go into the world to be like them. No, don't do that. The Lord says, if you remain faithful to death, he will give you the crown of life. Finally, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 5, or 1 to 7. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride and done for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a taste of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Overcome. Don't sin. Overcome sin. Overcome Satan. Overcome temptation. Overcome the tra contradictions of men. Overcome whatever. Overcome your, the, all the trials from your wife. All the trials from your husband. All the trials from your relations. All the trials from the church. Trials from everyone. Overcome them all. And maintain righteousness. Don't fall because anybody else has fallen. No, remain righteous. The Lord says you will inherit all things. 
God is a rewarder. Choose to have the best reward. The best reward is heaven. Choose it. Then choose holiness. Let's rise up upon our feet and worship the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Commit yourself to God and say, I will serve God in righteousness and holiness. I don't want to be rewarded on earth only. I don't want to be blessed on earth only. I need both heaven, or both earth and heaven. What is the benefit of that? I have a car, I can ride a car on earth. What does that mean? I need heaven. Confess every sin in your life that is spoiling this precious life that God has given you. This wonderful ministry that God has given you. Ministry of singing, minister of praying, minister of visitation, minister of evangelism, minister of pastoring, various ministries. Don't allow it to be dented by iniquity. The Lord may keep quiet, but he will reward you accordingly. Jesus name we pray give me that old time religion give me that give me that father give me that Jesus give me that I need that for it was good for John and Peter. It was it was good for John and Peter. Is Enough for it was good for Mary and Martha. It was it was it is good. Father, give me that. Give me that. I need that. Now go and tell the Lord about that. The people who serve God in all time, they serve Him in righteousness and holiness. Now they're in heaven. Tell God you want to follow after their pattern. You want to follow after their pattern. Why should you be rewarded on it only? Why should you be rewarded on it only?
us. A father open eyes of your children to serve you. To look for it all over the world. Look for holiness. Look for holiness to go to heaven. Jesus name we pray Amen. let today be a remarkable day in your life Amen. you will remember the covenant of today Amen. the day you took a new turn in your Christian life and ministry Amen. now you are ready to serve God from today in righteousness and holiness. Not a sinning minister, a sinning pastor, a sinning missionary. No, no more. I will serve God from today in holiness. Raise up your hand. I will pray with you. From today, it's not all that may it's not all may take that decision. You whose eyes have opened and you say I've been serving God in sin. Jehu type of ministry. Jehu type of life. But today you're too few. You're too few that I will say come forward here. I will stand by you to pray with you. Just come forward. Come forward. It's a decision. Let God know that there are people whose eyes have opened, who have made up their minds that from today, all this thing morality and walking and no, I will do that no more. I will take holiness. Holiness will follow me in ministry. I don't want to receive blessing on earth only. I want to be blessed in heaven. That's the main thing. If it were for this world only, we come to Jesus, we serve Jesus, go to the bush and labor there with mosquitoes. I will be of all men most miserable. Good. Good. Tell the Lord, I have decided from today. And it, I will pray for you and it will work for you. It will work. It will work. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you. Lay hand upon yourself, upon your chest. I'm committing you to the Lord. Divine Father, these ones have heart that nobody can play you. You give to every man as he desires. I'm according to what he deserves. And these ones don't want to be rewarded on earth only. They want heaven. I am requesting make holiness complete in their lives. Let the power of holiness enter into their lives. Let sanctification of heart be given unto their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The blood of Jesus that washes and cleanses from sin and preserves in righteousness walk in their lives. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray.
Lord, thank you. You back up the ministry of your servant to bless the people you send him to. These ones have hurt my world. Father, back up this word in their lives. This church has hurt the word of commission. Back up this word in their lives. Break every power that is hindering holiness. Break it. In Jesus' name we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus be abundant over their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. You can. You purchased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. I believe in you Cause you are my Lord and Savior You are my Lord and Savior Jesus, I believe in you I believe in you Lord, cause you are You are the living Savior I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe, I believe, I believe in you, Lord, cause you are my